Why does Ludi look like an 80s actor? It's the mustache, really, it's just the mustache. My fellow cave dwellers of the world, today we'll be covering the nation of Persia. Famous for the movie 300 and nothing else, I mean, it's, it's famous for other stuff as well. Like the Persian cats and for oil. No, get, get out of here, America, get out of here. That was awkward. So the goal today is to get a special achievement that only 0.2% of players actually have only a small percentage of you are subscribed to the channel I have a dream I want to reach a hundred thousand subscribers by the end of this year if I get that verified tick I can tell my grandma hey grandma I'm a real youtuber now and then she's gonna say what is YouTube why you look so skinny you kids nowadays are not doing anything but I digress let's get this started you can form Persia as a variety of nations here however for today we're gonna be playing as a gen and we're gonna be going into Iron Man mode so let's uh, purr it up now in order to form Persia we actually need to have these highlighted provinces either the one from QQ and uh, Mazandran with Yaz or Kerman Shiraz and Yazd is fine as well so that means if we have one more against the Timurids that is all we need to win in order to form Persia before we get to that point we're gonna get our rivals and you're always gonna have QQ Mushasha and the Timurids is your first three rivals we also are gonna go for the lenient taxation to get reduction in liberty desire for our subjects And we got two of them at the start which means we can give these strong duchies for even more liberty desire in subject reduction and Diplo a relations plus two. We also will be giving the plus one mana privileges and the minus 25% Advisor cost reduction privileges. We'll check which province is cheapest to develop as well encourage development in that province and then develop production once after we can sell titles go to your economic screen so you refresh the values for the estates and then afterwards develop comb a second time after that we're gonna summon the diet go for whichever agenda best suits us and we'll be seizing lands as well we also will be adopting the title of Mia Khalifa and we will not change to the Shiite religion because we'll be going Zoroastrian very soon because we start with a Timurids leader we actually can form both the Timurids and the Mughals but if we form Persia we cannot form the other two afterwards so choose whatever you want to go for wisely before you start. I recommend Persia because Ajam is actually really well positioned to quickly form Persia and take advantage of all that Persia has to offer. If you have a morale of armies advisor or discipline that's perfect if you don't have anything else is fine as well make sure you do get some advisors as mana points are very important in the early game. Alliance wise we can go for some some of the neighbors of the Timurids such as Nogai for example and uh, Uzbeks. Akoyunlu is a good choice also since you will be attacking Karakoyunlu and you can use them in the war against Karakoyunlu. You can support the independence of Transoxiana however I recommend that you actually start your own separate war rather than supporting the independence of uh, Transoxiana. I'm only doing this so that they get enough liberty desire to not fight in the war that I am gonna start against the Timurids. We also start with zero professionalism so we will be recruiting the free company and the province of Qom next to the rest of our army and we'll be making our starting leader a general holy mother of god sick shock. That is perfect. The easiest way to get claims on the Timurids is to send them an insult and afterwards we have our mission here a Jami leadership that gives us claims and military power on pretty much all of the south part of the Timurids so we already have the claims on the 11th of December we can start the war. Well, actually on the 28th because I forgot to send the insult on the first day of the game before unpausing. So you don't make that mistake, okay? We're gonna even give land to the Uzbeks and we're gonna set Kerman our war target. Don't be worried about the vassals that the Timurids have. Look at this, 100% liberty desire, 100% and 100% and 100%. That means that you're essentially only fighting the Timurids, not any of their vassals as these units are not gonna move from their homelands so the main target should be the Timurid lands do not even go in the adjacent lands until after you finish the Timurids you also want to declare the war before the vassals declare the independence war because once that happens it's gonna be harder to get the province of Shiraz from uh, an independent farce and because they also will give you a harder time getting the war score since the Timurids are gonna be split between multiple nations the easiest way to win this war is obviously to just engage the enemy armies after they've got 
got movement lock, which means that essentially you'll be able to wipe out as many of the small stacks before they merge into a bigger stacks. Booyah shaka my boys. The timurid go bye bye. They go very bye bye. That's this tiny stack and wipe and everybody. Be careful not to get stack wiped yourself though. We gonna get that revenge we want though. And that ya go no more timurids around. Please. Oh, oh there you go. It fell everybody. It listened to me. All right. Well now we just gotta carpet siege the rest of this. If you do declare the war before the vassals declare their independence war, you won't be getting as much war score as you wanna get. So I actually recommend that you peace out once you have the provinces that you need i'm just gonna peace out for these provinces right over here right now and i will let the various vassals destroy the timurids right after that we can even get the first military tech this is all we need in order to form persia all we need to do now is just wait until we have actually cored these provinces we also can get an alliance with the mamaliks now i recommend you get that alliance as it's gonna come in handy once we're fighting the turks later on well what do you know they did did declare the independence war right after I finished my war and we're gonna do another war ourselves we're gonna be attacking Karakoyunlu over here for the reconquest of our vassals cores in fact let me get a secondary general here please be shocked we got both shock and siege okay we actually got a really decent general and at the same time I'm getting claims on Baluchistan as I want to go for the province of Daman holy mother of god 109 days to take over this nation that is pretty darn fast not gonna lie and they've given up hope which means we can annex them now meanwhile 21% on our double already and we've sent the Chad general to take care of Tabriz and hey we cored up all the lands we needed in order to form Persia which means technically it only took us five or six years except I'm not at peace so I gotta wait until after this war in order to form Persia we also can annex our double now and uh, afterwards we have access to the nation of Shirvan, which has an amazing Zoroastrian monument that can give up to 10 discipline. This really is one of the best monuments in the game right now. And there you go, Tabriz has fallen as well. We can now siege out the rest of this. I like how the AI always focuses on the weakest country first. So they're focusing on Ako Yunlu, which is actually the reason why I called them into the war to make sure that the army is of Karako Yunlu focus on them. Well, they got fully sieged down here, which likely means that they're gonna get pieced out so soon there you go i knew it a jami reconquest of whatever they got two provinces they lost not a big deal and it increased my overall war score with uh, karako yunlu go out on your terms karako yunlu i think not we're gonna go out on my terms and my terms are you giving me all the north part my vassals cores and all the money to take advantage of and build up my nation all right now that we've taken all of this next up we got to get some claims on shiraz and we have been getting claims on uh, Baluchistan, so we can get our guy back right now. And boyos, look at this. We can form the Persian nation because we are at peace now. Let's go Persia. Yes, please. New traditions and ambitions. And we have a slightly smaller mission tree. We do have a sexy map color, however, and a really cool interaction that can give us minus 15 construction costs, minus 20 dev costs, both of these in our capital project province or we can get holy war on nations adjacent to us that are not our religion we've started integrating both of our vassals over here and they're gonna get integrated on the same month because i timed it well i also can do concentration over here on both of them which means it's gonna be a lot faster integrating them now and i am gonna use my government interaction to get claims on shirvan without having to waste my precious diplomats on them and guess what we're we're gonna be at war with Karako Yunlu a second time now, which is good because it means I can completely wipe out Karako Yunlu from the face of the map, economically at least. You think you can come here and bully me, Karako Yunlu? Look at this minus two terrain, my boy. <laughs> hey, we've integrated Lustan, but we still haven't integrated Ardalan because they got sieged for a couple of months and it put them behind the integration speed. But we're not gonna click this button, and in three months, we're gonna have the nation of Ardalan integrated also. What did I just say? Huh? <laughs> 
I was right, wasn't I? Yes, I was. I, I was very right. I think it's safe to say we can peace out Karakoyunlu now. And obviously we're gonna go for the money, but we're also gonna take these three provinces over here. And you'll see in a few moments why we will be concentrating here and we will not be coring it for the time being. You probably guessed it. I'm gonna release Iraq from these regions and uh, Syria from this one. Whilst we wait for the siege in Mazandran to finish, we're gonna be attacking a Baluchistan as we want to snake our way to the province of Daman over here, since this is a special province for us. Somebody gonna get the real heart over here, yes, yes. Well, looks like you cannot hide behind your walls anymore, Mazandra Bron. You're gonna die now, my boy. All right, we'll peace out Mazandran first. A full annexation, of course, from them. Followed by the Nation of uh, Shivan. We do have a little bit of coalition. I guess we can wait for a couple of months. Well, this seems like a lot less nations in this coalition. So, uh, full annexation for Shervanio over here. The last of the Baluchis have also said goodbye to us in a, a classic stack and situation and hallelujah everybody Zoroastrian zealots have spawned now we got to make sure these guys survive and convert a lot of our country to Zoroastrian so because I'm in a war but I don't want any of these nations to kill off the rebels here I am gonna peace out the uh, Baluchistan and I'm gonna take as much money and land as I can take from them I managed to take the entire Makran state but most importantly I took the province of Kalat which is a mountain fort that basically prevents anybody from coming outside of the Indian subcontinent into the Persian areas from the south part. Whilst in the north we have the same through the fort of Aro and even Jalalabad, both of which we'll take in the future. We can in the meanwhile release the nations of Iraq and even the nation of Syria, both of which have a lot of other cores that we can feed afterwards. Syria's got all of this juice and Iraq's got all of this juice. We did lose one core province of ours but it was an integrated core province so it's not a big deal the benefits outweigh everything over here and that means we can also give out the strong duchies once more now we can do a few missions as well once Zoroastrian converts enough provinces of your country to Zoroastrian then we can accept their demands making Zoroastrian our state religion and as such we get these Zoroastrian mechanics that are basically identical to the Coptic ones you need to control the five holy cities and make sure that they're also Zoroastrian and then you get access to these amazing bonuses over here. So for us right now, our next goal is to get Laristan, Kiva and Zabzavar from the alliance block that is Transoxia, Khorasan and uh, Fars. So that's going to be my next war. That means I got to get ready for the war and I got to make sure that I take those exact provinces. We'll be attacking Fars first and that's going to bring in Afghanistan and Transoxiana in the war and after after one month, we're going to be attacking Khorasan and Afghanistan with Transoxiana cannot join because they're already in the Fars War. We also managed to catch Biapasa's army off guard. They were still drilling the boyos. You might also be wondering, how do I have such a good economy? Well, to be frank, I'm selling off a lot of my crownlands. I get 700 each time I sell crownlands. And I'm still above 10%, which helps out immensely in the early wars. Also, remember to lower your autonomy everywhere I pretty much have below 15 autonomy in every single one of my provinces as I have been lowering autonomy these guys are either really brave or really really stupid whichever the case they're not around anymore Shirvan our first holy site is now Zoroastrian which means we can choose our first blessing and considering I have quite a little bit of corruption because of overextending I'm gonna go for that as my first blessing don't get me wrong missionary strength is also a great one but the corruption Corruption is very important. Wow, wow, we were summer kind. Thank you very much for the five professionalism. And Chingajuga over here is siege down, which means we can piece these guys out, hopefully. No, they still want to be in the war, but we got more war score with uh, Khorasan, which means we can piece out Khorasan itself. We can take three, maybe four, four provinces, it is. And how much money can we take as well? And a little bit of money, not too much. This should be fine for the time being. It's giving us the 
second holy city of Sabjavar. Let's core it all up here. Nice. And it also means we have access to Transoxiana, the capital of which we just took. So we can take two cities. We really just want Kiva and Konjikawa. Kiva is also important since it is another holy city of ours. And that means we get the last holy city from Farce. We're not taking too much of their land because we already have a pretty sizable coalition against us. And I really don't want that one to fire. At least not right now. This looks like a fair deal to me. Let's go Fars. Noise. And now all we need to do is fix our country and convert these to our religion. Skipping into the future a little bit. We have started another war against Sindh and their ally Gujarat. And we co belligerated Gujarat. Which means that we can take the province of Daman for almost no aggressive expansion. Whilst from Sindh we're going to be taking their capital as well as the connecting area here to Afghanistan. We want short truces as we will attack these guys in a while again. We also managed to take a little bit more land from the Timurids and we will be attacking Karakoyunlu to get back our course for our vassal Iraq over here. Oh yeah, Shaka! Let's try and snipe their army if we can. And of course, core up all of this stuff. We also started spawning in Renaissance in Tehran as we have quite a few development reduction modifiers. So look at this, 28% dev once, it goes up to 32%. So essentially, by spending a little bit of points into this, we actually can get the Renaissance. There you go. We now have the Renaissance in Ter- What? What? 99 point- What? Okay, I guess we need one little bit more <laughs> before we get the Renaissance. On the bright side though, our Baku Ateshga is already level 2 and we are saving up money to make this a level 3 temple which means that we can get our achievement, keep the flame burning for which we need to have the temple at level 3 and all of the religious centers which we already have. Oh, you guys are gonna get the real hurt now. I don't think you're gonna win this and I think I'm gonna chase you down afterwards. Uh huh. Oh yes, Karakoyunlu, come over here, let's fight it out, let's dish it out, let's get rid of your army, shall we? By the way guys, a very important thing to take note of, you can still have the feudal theocracy even as a Zoroastrian nation, but remember that you have to choose it after you become Zoroastrian. This means that you basically can get holy war interaction against all of your neighbors because nobody else is Zoroastrian. This is like having religious ideas fully unlocked. Alright, this war is pretty much done. Let's take these provinces from them. It's not many nations in the coalition. Let's check. Ah, there you go. Nobody important. So that is actually a-okay. Gonna core this up and we can start integrating Iraq themselves. We're gonna be concentrating on this nation before we integrate them, of course. We got 2k gold. We just need 3,000 more. So we have a few options. We can either take some loans. I've basically been getting most of my money from wars and from a really good economy. I do have a lot of ducats even though I'm at full land force limit and I've been converting to my religion lands continuously. You know what? This is actually really worth it. Let's get the loans. We can get the 1% loans first and that is going to be a lot cheaper than uh, getting the regular loans as well as we can sell lands after we've killed the rebels. In fact, we can recycle this and get 1% loans twice. Tariago. Now we are actually at the amount we need. We get 800 more from selling titles. Nice. Rebels are dead. We sold the crown loans which means that we can now upgrade the temple in Shirvan to level 3 and that also means that we can invest a little bit more of this cash to speed it up. I love it when nations do not maintain their forts. Look at this. We're getting there on the 26th, which means that we actually are going to take their forts without having to siege them down. <laughs> I'm only attacking Georgia right now because it was an easy target and it just is allied with Trebizond. I wouldn't even bother otherwise. And it's basically done now. We can piece them out. A noise. Concentration here as well so we get all this dev in our capital. And the most important part, we got two mountain forts right over here protecting the north from any would-be invaders. I don't think I remember the last time I've seen Sauron actually exist as a nation. Hey, Iraq has been integratioed. That means we can make them full cores over here and get the highest amount of benefits from these lands. It also means we gotta accept Mashriki as a culture, as that's gonna give us a lot of bonuses. We can do the same with the Uzbeks. Oh, look at this, guys. I didn't even see this before. We got a small Armenia over here. <laughs> I'm gonna kill them. And of course, with Sauron, they lived for far too long they cannot be allowed to live for this long for their own safety hold up is it the crusades time what is this 
The knights managed to bring in the French somehow. I'm guessing the French were def No, the French allied the knights. I was going to say defender of the faith, but okay. We're getting crusades in the 1490s, everyone. Holy mother of schnapps. All right, guys. Myra Gea has been fully cored up, which means we can do our super secret decision over here. I'm talking about rekindle the royal fires, which happens only for Persia if you are Zoroastrian. So what does this do it basically gives us plus 20 percent manpower in zoroastrian provinces as well as prestige and legitimacy until the end of the game this is actually insanely overpowered and to do this you need to be an empire which you are when you form persia as well as control a few specific provinces so let's go ahead and click this but we also have a second great thing we are almost about to finish the level 3 bakuateshka so we can get the achievement we just need to wait for four years but i'm not gonna wait for four years i'm gonna invest my manpower because i have a buttload of manpower left so daria go today is a great day indeed monument in shirvan and the best part of it is that we managed to get this awesome achievement that only a small percentage of people actually have not to mention getting it before 1500 is a big win so overall for zoroastrian you get plus 10 discipline culture conversion cost reduction fire damage received and given out bonus together with governing capacity plus 10 percent goods produced construction cost reduction missionary strength and corruption reduction as well as of course trade efficiency and tolerance of the true faith it's not an amazing religion but the reality is that Zoroastrian is definitely one of the best religions out there right now i would probably say it's fourth or fifth as it currently stands idea wise if you're curious i went for quantity of course with economic as my second because persia is really one of the best nations to be playing toll as and i likely would be going for religious third to get the proper dose vault against everybody in the world or trade if i want to be a massive trade conglomerate if you enjoyed the video consider liking it if we get 7,000 likes i'll do a second part for this particular run and consider subscribing if you've binge watching my videos it would really mean the world to me to brag to my grandma about how i'm a super cool youtuber and I want to give a very big thank you to all of my channel members, Patreon members, as well as my Twitch supporters. I really wouldn't be able to do this without all of your support. You guys are absolutely amazing.